With me, I have Dr. Renan Bergman, a senior Israeli military and intelligence analyst and author of the book The Secret War with Iran. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us here on RT. Most welcome. So to cut to the chase, is Israel planning an attack on Iran? Well, I, put it, I would put it this way. Israel wouldn't like to attack. Israeli leaders understand the possible horrendous results of such an attack, the possible intervention of Hezbollah and Hamas, possibly Syria, the condemnation from Europe, the uh, ballistic um, anger from, uh, from the United States and other uh, outcomes. Therefore, if Israel would be able to stop the Iranian nuclear initiative using in diplomatic pressure, uh, economic sanctions or supporting economic, in economic sanctions uh, imposed by the international community and clandestine operational intelligence means Israel would prefer to take this path. However, if all these don't work and Iran is getting too close to a bomb, then I think that the European intelligence communities and the United States, uh, I think that they don't understand how close Israel to launch an aerial strike on the nuclear facilities of Iran. At what point will Iran be too close? Iran has already crossed some of the so-called points of no return, and still there is a return from that point. Um, however, to have a bomb, to assemble a device, is considered to, by Israel, is considered to be beyond the point where a, 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 an aerial strike could be at least partly successful, could yield in a partial delay of the project. Therefore, the red line lies somewhere between the point in which we are now, uh, where Iran is already enriching uranium, uh, crossed uh, or has has closed the nuclear fuel cycle, etc., to the point where Iran assembles the first nuclear military device. Is there any discussion in Israeli circles of dates, a specific time frame of when that will be? According to the latest German, American, British, French, Israeli intelligence assessment, Iran is something like a year, a half a year to a year behind their ability to enrich uranium to 93 percent. The latest WikiLeaks reports suggest that some Arab leaders are putting pressure on the United States to attack Iran's nuclear reactor. Is there anything new in this and do you think America could follow? The, the, the WikiLeaks documents on the issue of Arab pressure on the United States to take, to take harsher steps vis-a-vis -vis Iran are not new to uh, to some of us, we have tried to publish some of this information. We were blocked by Israeli military censorship, unfortunately. We tried to fight some of that. But basically, it says in writing what we already know. But the fact that it is in writing, this is an official secret American cable, has an importance uh, by its own. And it emphasizes how profound is the fear from Iran, not just from the uh, eyes of Israel, but also from uh, Sunni moderate countries in the Middle East. If because this is not new, and because all these countries, leading by uh, uh, Egypt, who persistently, continuously told the Americans to not engage Iran uh, in sort of a peace talk, do not enter this sort of a dialogue, uh, it would not help. And President Mubarak calling the Iranians in uh, 2009 back uh, big fat liars. Uh, I don't think that the revelation would change anything. The Americans still think that there is a possible uh, diplomatic or diplomatic slash sanction solutions. The WikiLeaks reports also suggest that there's not always agreement between the United States and Israel in terms of their strategic interests in the Middle East. Is it in America's interest to attack Iran? If President Bush did not take the decision and has his reasoning, I don't know what was true in real time, but President Bush in close sessions with people uh, whom I met and to some extent in this book says that he was prepared to strike Iran, but the uh, November 07 NIE, the National Intelligence uh, Estimate, uh, basically cuffed his hand when the uh, American intelligence community said that Iran does not have a military nuclear plan. Uh, 
it cuffed his hand and, and prohibited him to, to go for a strike. However, if President Bush did not strike, President Obama does not believe that a, that a military strike would, uh, would do the job or would benefit the uh, world peace or would solve the problem. And uh, I think that on the issue of using military strength against Iran, the United States and Israel see things very, very differently. But there is something on the go. Not so long ago, there was movement in the Mediterranean Sea, and reports suggested that Saudi Arabia had given Israel permission to use its airspace. So do you think that something is happening below the surface? I read, as far as I know, all the news, and they, were not, they did not appear just recently. They started to appear back in 2006, 2007, about Saudi Arabia giving permission to Israel to have a free passage through its area of space to Iran and back. As far as I know, these are all false. Where do you get your information from? As Bob Woodworth in, uh, quotes Bill Casey in his book on the CIA, people always or sometimes tell more, say more than you expect them to say. I think that the Israeli intelligence community, the Israeli security circles have not been dealt for many, many years in um, by uh, I would say by, by the, the, the right approach when it comes to coverage of these secret manners and secret issues. I think the people in Israel were terrified, with all good reason, not to deal with that. And I think that we are talking about new times when journalists can investigate these issues, come with conclusions, come with authority. And I'm not claiming that I know everything, but I'm trying to corroborate everything uh, that I say while knowing that I always have to suspect the sources. These are, this is the world of shadows. And the same spies who are using these clever techniques vis-a-vis -vis the Iranian nuclear scientists, for example, might use the same disinformation against me. You are currently writing a book entitled Mossad and the Art of Assassination. Is there going to be anything new about the Mossad, the Israeli secret service in this book, that has not already been written before? We'll have a lot of the details uh, of numerous assassination uh, operations that took place from the establishment of Mossad in 1949 until uh, today. But we'll also have a lot about the decision-making process. How does uh, an assassination, a targeted killing, is being authorized? What is the procedure? What are the dilemmas? Uh, who are the people involved? And just to give you one very, uh, very um, uh, interesting question about the, the, the people involved. Many of the leaders of Israel, in the, the leaders of the army, or the leaders of the political level, have been personally involved in assassination operations. What does it do to a, to a person, to a man, who was personally involved in such operations when he needs to deal with the, at least, past adversary? When he had the enemy on the hindsight of a, of, of a sniper gun, and now he needs to have sort of a dialogue. What does it do to his psychology, to his decision-making process? We are going to have the history of Israel portrayed and weaved through the use of targeted assassination. Israel, surprisingly maybe, Israel was the, or is the country who uses this uh, weapon far more than any other country in history. What kind of covert operations do you think are happening at the moment? Not so long ago, the Israeli Defense Forces Unit 8200 was suspected of infecting Iranian computers connected to Iran's nuclear program. So do you think that there are other things like this on the go? The discovery in Belarus of the, uh, the malware, Stuxnet, shocked the world of, of computer security. This is by far the most advanced and most lethal uh, virus, computer virus ever discovered. I'm not saying it's the, 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 uh, the biggest or the, uh, the, the best that was ever produced, but the best that was ever discovered. Um, the, the ability of Stuxnet to jump from a computer to a computer reaching standalone computers that are controlling the velocity of the centrifuges inside Natanz and Qom, the enriching uranium facilities in Iran. 
uh, in its ability to trick, to play, uh, and to exceed and to change very fast the velocity of the centrifuge, uh, are causing it to collapse. These are all extremely, extremely clever, sophisticated, and, and they can be the result only of the work of a country, of a very advanced technological country. Behind the scenes is the ongoing accusation between the uh, secret services of the countries who are able to produce it, Germany, France, Britain, the United States, and Israel, accusing each other in bringing to stuckness to the world. And why accusing if it's such, an, uh, such a big success? Because the discovery of Stuxnet is a huge uh, intelligence fiasco. Because now the Iranians are aware that someone is able to penetrate their standalone computers. They know how it was done. And they can take it out or they can prevent it, not just re regarding Stuxnet, but regarding all next cyber attacks. Dr. Bergman, thank you very much for joining us here on RT.